Hi, my name's Rebecca Ryan and I'm the Community Health Nurse Sexual Health Nurse for Bendigo Community Health Services. Today my topic that we're going to be covering for Women's Health Week is cervical screening and the reasons why you should go and get breast screening and be a participant in the program. Bowel Health and the Bowel Screening Program. So why do cervical screening? Routine cervical screening is your best protection against cervical cancer. It is one of the most preventable cancers. Almost all cervical cancers are caused by human papillomavirus. HPV is a very common infection which we all get sometime in our sexually active lives. However, usually we show no signs or symptoms and our body clears it up. What does cervical screening test look for? The cervical screening test detects the presence of human papillomavirus. The body can get rid of most HPVs or the human papillomavirus naturally. However, if it can't, some types of HPV can cause changes to the cells of the cervix. If cell changes aren't picked up early and treated, they can turn into cervical cancer. In fact, 80% of cervical cancer have never been screened or not had their regular screening tests. You can reduce your risk of cervical cancer by coming into Bendigo Community Health Services and encouraging women in your lives to have a cervical screening test too. So when do you actually start cervical screening? Well, it actually now starts at the age of 25 and you stop at the age of 74. It's a simple procedure, it's more accurate and it feels very similar to that old word pap test that some of you may be aware of. However, it tests for human papillomavirus. So if you're unsure, if you're up to date, call the National Cervical Screening Registry on 13 15 56. Why do I have to leave it for five years? And that's because the cervical screening test only usually occurs every five years if you're negative or a low risk. It's actually more effective than the old pap test. And the pap test actually only looked for cell changes, whereas cervical screening test looks for human papillomavirus, which can lead to cell changes in the cervix, which reduce cervical cancer rates and death by 20 to 30%. So it's an amazing test that you can have access to. Cervical screening test catches what could eventually turn into cervical cancer. One step earlier, and for that reason, women don't need to have a frequent, as frequently as the old pap test. So the other question I get asked is, what if I've had my HPV vaccine? I got those vaccines in year seven, so why do I have to have a cervical screening test? So with the human papillomavirus vaccine, you're actually only protected against some types, and therefore the cervical screening test will actually pick up the other ones that you may not have been vaccinated or for all the other population that haven't been vaccinated, like the older women like me. It doesn't treat human papillomavirus infections you already have. And you can still have an abnormal cervical screening test results after you have had the vaccine. And yes, in year seven, males and females do get vaccinated. And in today's year, 2020, they get vaccinated against nine types. But as I've said before, 14 types is what potentially goes on to cause cervical cancer. So we need to make sure there's no other infection in the cervix with regular screening. Information for LBGTQI people who have a cervix age between the age of 25 to 74 still need to have regular screening tests. No matter who you have had a sexual partner or what your gender identity is, you are still at risk of cervical cancer and almost all cervical cancers are caused by HPV. HPV can cause less common cancers like vagina, vulva, anal, mouth, throat and penile cancers. So if you identify as LBGTQI and have a cervix, you still need to have your screening test regularly. So come in and make an appointment. So what does your cervical test result mean when you get it in the mail? You might see a brochure like this, which says low risk, it means your result was negative and you need to come back in five years. Yippee! The other result you might get and the pamphlet you may get in the mail is what we call an intermediate risk. It means there's been a HPV type that's shown up and we need to keep a closer eye on you. So you need to come back in 12 months. 
Then if you get this brochure, don't freak out. It doesn't mean that you've got cervical cancer. It means that it's shown in your sample that you have human papillomavirus, which is a higher risk that needs further investigation. So don't ignore that letter and follow up as per your sexual health nurse or your GP has advised for further follow up. And then sometimes people get what we call an unsatisfactory. Now don't freak out about that one either. It just means that we couldn't read your result and it means we'll need to repeat it and you'll need to come back in the time frame that has been suggested to you. And in most cases, it's six to 12 weeks. So we do wanna see you back if you get one of these unsatisfactories. So make an appointment. Breast cancer is usually reported as the most common cancer affecting Australian women. If detected early and treated, the outcome is really good. More breast cancers are actually now diagnosed, but there are fewer deaths. So what can you do? You can do a breast self-examination. You get to know your risks. So unfortunately, being a woman increases your risks. Being over the age of 50 and sometimes when you have a family history increases your risk as well. A mammogram can occur over the age of 40 and the screening program starts at the age of 50. So what is a breast screen? Breast screening is free. It takes about 10 minutes. You don't need a GP referral. It's provided by a female radiographer and it's available here in Bendigo and in other areas of Victoria. It's actually an X-ray of your breasts. When you turn 50, guess what? You get so excited to go to the mail and find this letter that you've got the welcome letter to say, come and have a breast screen and make an appointment. And you get those every two years, if they're negative, till the age of 74. Did you know 75% of breast cancers occur in women over the age of 50? And regular breast screens are the best way to find breast cancer early. Trans and gender diverse are welcome to screen with breast screen. However, there is a unique criteria. No referrals required, and what you need to do to make an appointment is call 13 20 50 or book online, bookings.breastscreen.org.au. So who is breast screening for? Between the ages of 40 to 49, you're welcome to go to breast screen. You just won't get that invitation letter. The rates are lower in this age group and testing is actually less effective. However, you can still have a test every two years if it's negative. Breast cancer is actually more difficult to detect in this age group and in younger breast tissue. And for women over the age of 74, when breast screening is recommended to cease, you can actually still have it. You just won't receive that letter in the mail. And you can have it still every two years. So when is breast screen not available? When you're pregnant, when you're breastfeeding, showing any breast symptoms, or if you've had a recent diagnosis of breast cancer. So I do get asked, what are some of the signs of breast cancer? Some of these signs can indicate a change in the size, a change in nipple crusting or redness, nipple discharge, but without squeezing, a new lump, especially if only in one breast, change in the skin in dimpling or puckering, the nipple becoming inverted, so not one that you were born with inverted, but it becomes inverted, unusual pain that doesn't actually go away. So be breast aware is my big motto. Look in the mirror to get to know your own breast tissue. Feel your breast using the flat part of your hand, not your actual fingertips. Examine your breasts while lying down or in the shower. Be familiar with what your breast feels like and look out for those lumps or any other usual changes to the skin or nipples. So what can you do to reduce your risk of breast cancer? There are some. Drink less alcohol, quit smoking, manage your weight, be active, eat healthy foods, and talk to your sexual reproductive health nurse or GP about managing menopause symptoms. Did you know in Australia has one of the highest rates of bowel cancer in the world 
and around one in 23 of us will develop bowel cancer in our lifetime. And in relation to women, it's 45% of people diagnosed with bowel cancer are actually women. So it puts us at a higher risk as well. But when detected early, 90% of the cases can be successfully treated. Wow, that's amazing. Bowel cancer occurs when cells in the bowel lining grow too quickly, forming a clump known as a polyp or an adenoma. With the free bowel screening program, you actually get a kit in the mail. And did you know you'd be so excited to receive mail over the age of 50? That's you. And you get one like one of these, I know it's updated today, but like one of these in the mail. Don't be scared to open it, it's not that scary. You will get a pack and you'll open it up and it'll look something like this. It's so simple and easy that you pop the piece of paper in the toilet, get the little dip sticky, obviously do your poos, and just dip it in. It's only like a grain size rice. Pop it in and follow the instructions and send it back. The National Bowel Cancer Screening Program can be contacted on 1800 118 868 or if you need to talk to somebody, they'll be there between Monday to Friday, 8.30 to 5. What else can you do? Well, you can actually do something to try to help prevent you from getting bowel cancer. The most effective protection is to do that bowel kit that you do get sent in the mail for free. So make sure you do your bowel screening. Get 30 to 60 minutes of exercise, moderate and vigorous exercise per day. Maintain a healthy body weight, Eat a well-balanced diet, limit your alcohol, and quit smoking. If you want more information, please go to the National Bell Cancer Screening Program or cancer.org.au. The key points is to keep well. Thank you.